Good morning, folks. Obviously, the big story is the California earthquake sequence. Full details coming along with some interesting science stories from around the world. Starting at spaceweathernews.com and finding the last day on our star was very calm and quiet. The northern coronal hole extension is turning through center heliographic longitudes, while the stream from the previous coronal hole turned out to be a short-lived one in addition to being a relatively weak stream. All geomagnetic conditions are quiet. It was nearly a minute between my sister's text that her Los Angeles apartment was shaking and my realization that the USGS was struggling to handle all the data requests. It is still struggling this morning in the wake of a 7.1 magnitude earthquake in Ridgecrest. Dozens of aftershocks spreading north and south along the tertiary fault zone. The concern has been a year's worth of foreshocks from January to June and the snow melt weight redistribution. It will be imperative to follow the continued shaking as there are vastly more devastating fault lines that could be triggered nearby, and the alert certainly continues. Let's go to a shot taken during the eclipse. Polarized light showing coronal structure and magnetic fields, the polar streams, the solar wind, the equatorial current sheet, all visible here and nicely separated for easy viewing because there are not many sunspots to twist and sculpt those magnetic fields. But in sunspot maximum, that would indeed be the case. Folks, this story describes how the CME observations reveal much greater complexity during sunspot maximum, not just a higher frequency of them. The reason is because during sunspot maximum, there is a ton of that chaos and lack of large-scale order of the fields, in other words, the opposite of what you're seeing in this eclipse photo. Up next, they have detected the magnetic connection and plasma exchange between a star and a planet outside this solar system. At Earth, every eight minutes there is a flux transfer between Earth and Sun. We know of many such connections for the other planets in our systems too, but here we find the first measurement of these key interactions in a different solar system. Sweary is looking at Kuiper belt binaries and doing some simulations to try to recreate their formation conditions. And while they are able to get clumps to begin to set up, one thing missing from their model would be the magnetic fields, another the plasma turbulence, and if we're discovering that those control star formation, why not one scaled level down? A quick moment for Hubble to show off visible and UV emission from star formation within NGC 972, Without the UV or infrared, those outer rings look very dark and dusty. Last but not least, turns out there is a fossilized tree in New Zealand that completely contains the largest magnetic event on Earth of the last 100,000 years. Top takeaways are this. The event was fast enough to be completely recorded before, during, and after the magnetic excursion. The next time it happens, our satellites are toast and probably much more and that it's not a matter of if, but when, especially considering that the next one is unfolding now, getting faster and faster. We greatly appreciate your support. Still on alert on the West Coast, we've got your next 24-hour wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.